So you're preparing yourself for a job interview or for university, or you just want to know more about C sharp topics in general. Well, then you're watching the right video because in this video, you are going to learn how to develop a C sharp software, which is going to check if a number is a prime number or not. What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. And by the way, this is C sharp Wednesday. So if you're interested in C sharp knowledge, then definitely check out our weekly videos on Wednesdays and don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And of course, if you're interested in any of the other topics that you can see here, so Unity on Mondays, Android on Fridays and Python on Sundays, then definitely check out the videos on those days as well. So what is a prime number? Well, a prime number is a number that can be divided by itself and by one. So it starts with two. So two is the first prime number in the list of numbers and the number has to be a natural number. All right, so if you want to know everything there is about prime numbers and how to use them in C-sharp, you can of course check out the article that we created on that topic. I'll leave a link in the description below. And in general, you can always check out the blog because we are posting the content on the blog as well that you can then afterwards see in the videos. All right, so who discovered it? Well, it was Eratosthenes who created an algorithm that calculated prime numbers. That was quite a while ago, pretty smart guy for its time. And he was an ancient Greek astronomer, geographer and mathematician. So there's a beautiful history of prime numbers, all of that. But now the question is, how can we find prime numbers in a traditional way? And that is the cool thing. So the scythe of Eratosthenes, he found this pretty cool way to basically get the prime numbers from 2 to 30 in a very simple way. So first of all, you write all the numbers down from 2 to 30. And then you cross out everything that is dividable by 2. So every second number, pretty much, you just cross it out. Then you do the same thing for 3. So every number that is dividable by 3 is also crossed out. So 3 itself, of course, is not crossed out, but 6, 9, 12, and so forth. And then you do the same thing for 5, excluding 5, of course. So 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And what you're left with are all of the prime numbers. So you have the prime number 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. If you represent it in a graphical way, these are the prime numbers from 1 to 100. So you can see the bigger the number gets, the less prime numbers you will find. And even going from 1 to 1000, you can see at one point there are fewer and fewer prime numbers per 100. The largest known prime number is 2 raised to the power of 57,885,161 minus 1. So pretty large number and it took quite some computing power to calculate that number. So some people were really, really heavily invested into finding out the largest prime number. And as I stated before, the smallest prime number is 2 per definition. So what are some applications of prime numbers? So for example, in computer science, it is used for the RSA encryption system or cryptography. Basically decryption in the system relies on computing the Euler's phi function. And in order to calculate the phi value, you can use Fibonacci or the Fibonacci sequence. And that is going to be the video that we're going to cover next week. Then in biology, there are these beautiful animals called cicadas. I hope I pronounced it correctly. And they are of the genus of Magikikadas. And those are very interesting animals because they pupate and then emerge from the boros after 7, 13 and 17 years. So it's prime numbers years in this case. And it's really interesting that animals use these prime numbers. Biologists theorize that these prime numbered breeding cycle lengths have evolved in order to prevent predators from synchronizing with these cycles. So it's basically a survival mechanism that they have established here. There is also a pretty cool video about these creatures. I'm going to add a link to the video. Quick pause. This video is sponsored by tutorials.eu. Well, that's the name of the channel, right? Well, anyways, I also have a course that I offer. And in this course, you're going to learn a lot more about C Sharp. I'm going to get this 30 hour long course where you're going to learn everything that you need to know about C Sharp, including WPF, 
databases, of course the fundamentals, well, I'm not even gonna talk about that. You're going to learn how to use link, you're going to see how to use threads, how delegates work and all of the complex stuff as well. And of course, you're going to learn how to build games with Unity. All right, all of that in a neat little package with a bunch of exercises, support from us, and also a bunch of quizzes and handouts. Okay, so I hope to see you in this course. Thanks a lot for being with me. And now let's get back to the video. All right, now let's look at it from a programmatic standpoint. So from a C-sharp programming standpoint. So what I have here is a C-sharp program with the class program and the main method in which we're going to do all of the action. So what I'm going to develop is a tool which allows me to enter a whole number and then this tool will check if that number is a prime number or not. So what we're going to need is first of all a prompt asking the user to enter a number that he wants to check. And we then store that number in this variable called number. And we convert to an integer 32 whatever the user has entered. So we are limited by the size of an int 32. So we cannot go higher than 2 billion with that. All right. So roughly 2 billion. It's a little bit more, but that's going to be fine for now. Then we need a variable which will count how many times we can divide that number into a whole number. So whatever the user has entered, we're going to divide that and we're going to see how many times can we divide that. Then I'm going to add a variable, divisors, which is going to be the amount of divisors that we have. So 10, for example, would have four divisors. Next, we need a for loop. So this for loop, what it's going to do is it will basically start with i equals one and then it will check is i less or equal to our number. So whatever the number is that we entered, it will check if that's smaller than the iteration that it's currently running through and then it's going to increment after the for loop iteration. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at an example here. Let's say we entered the number five. So it's going to check is one less or equal five. Well, that's the case. All right, so let's check this if loop here or run the code within the brackets. So it's going to check is five modulo i, which is one, equal zero. So what does that even mean? What is this modulo operator that I'm using here? Well, the modulo operator is basically doing a division and then it doesn't return the result of the division, but it returns the remainder. So let's say we use five modulo two, what we would get is one because five divided by two is going to be two remainder one. So modulo is giving us the remainder, which is in this case one. So what we are checking here is if the number that we entered divided by i is going to be a remainder of zero, which means a modulo of zero. If that's the case, then we know that we need to increase the amount of divisors. So for the case of five, we need to increase the divisors from zero to one. And then we go through this whole iteration i is going to be at five. So this for loop is going to run multiple times. And each time this if loop is gonna say no, this condition is not met because for example, five divided by two is not remainder zero, it's remainder one, as well as five divided by three is remainder two, five divided by four is remainder one, and five divided by five is going to be remainder zero. So at that point, we are going to have divisors being two. So it's going to give us the amount of divisors that the result of divisions with the number that the user has entered are possible. So for example, for 10, we have the divisor one, the divisor 10, the divisor five, as well as the divisor two, which each are going to have a remainder of zero if we divide it. So 10 divided by five or by two or by one, or by 10 is each going to give us a zero. So we have four divisors for the value of 10. All right, and now we just need to print out to the user if the number is a prime number or not. So now we check if divisors is equal to two, then we know it's a prime number. And if it's not equal to two, then we know it's not a prime number. Okay, so at this point, we can check out the whole solution. You can see this is all of the code that we needed. We needed no more code than that. And now we can run the application and check if it actually works. So let me check it with 
15, for example, as I know that 15 is not a prime number. All right, now let's run it again. This time I'm going to check it with five and it says the entered number is a prime number. Let's test it once again with 13. It says the entered number is a prime number. Now let's just use a super huge value. So something that is a little bigger, you see, it took a little bit. So there was a tiny fraction of a second which our program actually needed to do this calculation because there were so many four loop iterations, as many as this number here is, whatever that number is. So it's 112 million here. And it took quite a while. So now let's run it again with two trillion. Okay, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. You see, now it takes quite a while to do all of these for loops. So we're running a huge for loop here and then it gives me the result and it says, okay, whatever number I entered here is not a prime number. Now let's go ahead and check with any of those prime numbers here. So you can see this is a list of prime numbers online at compasso.free.fr and you can go all the way to 1000 billion and you can check if it's a prime number. So I'm just gonna use this number here. So 122,069. So let's try it, 122069. And we can see it even says here that this is a prime number. And now let's test it with a really cool number. And that is going to be 404269 or 96. And you can see this is also a prime number. Well, I tried 40469, unfortunately, that is not a prime number. So the entered number is not a prime number. All right, so there we are. Now you know how to use prime numbers and what prime numbers are and in general how to find out if a number is a prime number using C sharp code. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and also check out the link in the description where you can find the code and of course the article. And also, if you want to know everything there is to know about C sharp, fundamentals and want to become a real C Sharp developer, then of course, check out my complete C Sharp masterclass. There will be a link in the description as well. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a nice day.